welcome to you all. Home sweet we're home. Very, we're very excited to be here today. We want to thank all of you for coming. Some of you came a long, long way. Others came shorter distances, but you all are very nice to be here. We're, yeah, I'm going to clap. That's clap for each other. We're going to start with uh, a welcome by two of our people that were involved in helping to organize this conference. Will Griffin from Veterans for Peace. From He's from Georgia. And Will came here to do some advanced work for the conference. And, uh, and sitting next to him is Joy Johnson from the Green Party. Madison County, Alabama, and uh, when I first came here to do some advanced work, I met with her and Tom over here, and I'm sitting by the computer. So, uh, we're going to turn it over to them and let them uh, say some things. All right. Welcome, and thank you all for coming. We are very happy that everyone could make it. Um, first, I'd like to let everybody know that if you do need to use the toilet, just exit out of this door and immediately make it last and go all the way down and just see the bathrooms uh, down there. Uh, okay. My name is Will Griffin. I'm a member of the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space. I'm also a member of uh, Veterans for Peace who helped sponsor this event, uh, both nationally and locally, uh, with my Savannah, Georgia chapter 170. I'm on the steering committee of the U.S. Task Force to Stop That in Korea and Militarism in Asia and the Pacific, which also sponsored this event. I'm also the creator of the Peace Report, an online news source for anti-war and nonviolent news for peace and justice. Thank you. Thank you. My Facebook page just reached 60,000 likes last night, um, and my videos have over six. 16 million views. Wow. So if you could check it out on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, that would be great. I talk about Global Network, anti-war movement, everything. Um, so that's me. I'll be introducing the event today. Uh, but first, uh, I'd like to give, I know Bruce already did this, but let's just give a special thank you to the local members here, especially Tom, Joy, and Mike in the audience for lo helping us locally organize this. <laughs> Now, this conference will have guests from all over the world. We have speakers from seven countries, all to join here today to build an international citizens movement to keep space for peace. As a way to recognize these people, may I ask all the international guests to please just stand up for a moment so we can give you a round of applause. So if you're not from the U.S., please stand up. Mr. Rao, I see you, you're from India. Tulsi, could you stand up here? We have Mrs. Kim from Korea. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this year's conference is titled U.S. Missile Defense and the Weaponization of Space. The global network's main goal is to stop the milit militarization of space. So, since missile defense is in the title this year, I'd like to briefly go over some missile defense history or anti-ballistic missile history. The two terms are interchangeable. Uh, so we all can bring, we, we can all begin this conference on the same track. I'll also be going over the history of the global network briefly. Uh, they line up very well. I'll go through each uh, history in chronological order. It's a lot of, uh, I'm trying not to go over too many details, but it's a lot of basic info that I think everybody should know before you start this conference. So first, let me define what missile defense is. It is a system, weapon, or technology involved in the detection, tracking, interception, and destruction of attacking missiles. Both the United States and the Soviet Union began developing these technologies back in the 1950s. But it wasn't until 1972 when both parties signed the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, or the ADM Treaty. Under the terms of the treaty, each party was limited to just two ABM complexes, two sites, each of which to be limited to only 100 anti-ballistic missiles. 
Fast forward to 1983, President Reagan began the famous Strategic Defense Initiative organization to assess the feasibility of these missile defense systems. It became known as the Star Wars program. Coupled with Reagan's increased military budget, the missile defense industry became a booming business. Eleven years later, in 1994, the Clinton administration redesigned Reagan's Star Wars program to become the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization and reorients the program to focus on theater missile defense. Theater missile defense is to deploy nuclear and conventional missiles for the purposes of maintaining so-called security in a specific region or theater. <coughs> Later, in Cylinder Clinton, the Senate passes the National Missile Defense Act of 1999, which defined the mission of the Ballistic Missile Defense Organization. It states, quote, It is the policy of the United States to deploy as soon as technologically possible an effective national missile defense system capable of defending the territory of the United States against limited missile ballistic missile attacks, whether accidental, unauthorized, or deliberate, with funding subject to the annual authorization of appropriations and the annual appropriation of funds for national missile defense." Unquote. This was in March 16, 16, 1999. The next day on March 17, the House of Representatives commit the United States to deploy national missile defense. In 2002, under President George W. Bush, he withdraws the U.S. from the ABM Treaty from 1972. It lasted for 30 years. In this process, 31 members of Congress sued the Bush administration in federal court, claiming the withdrawal was unconstitutional. Obviously, it failed. Also, the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, designed a ballistic missile defense organization and changed it to the Missile Defense Agency, which continues today. This change provides the MDA, Missile Defense Agency, greater bureaucratic independence as, it, as its director reports directly to the Under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics. In 2008, a NATO summit agrees to join U.S. missile defense systems to cover Europe. The next year, in 2009, reaching a new administration, President Obama announced a European Phased Adaptive Approach, EPAA, which will be executed in four phases. Phase one, which began in, in, excuse me, in 2011, deploys Aegis ballistic missile defense systems to southern Europe to address ballistic missile threats. Phase two began in 2015 deploys land-based SM-3 missile defense interceptors in Romania, expanding coverage of ballistic missile threats. Also, the same year, the Aegis Ashore in Romania is declared operational. Phase 3, beginning in 2018, and deploys, will deploy land-based SM-3 missile defense in Poland, improving coverage of ballistic missile threats. Also, the Aegis Ashore deploys uh, the Aegis Ashore deploys to Poland just as well as the land-based SM3. In Phase Four, which will begin in 2020, will deploy another land-based SM3 missile defense system in the Middle East, enhancing coverage of ballistic missile threats. While the European Phase Adaptive Approach was being implemented under the Obama administration. MD systems were being deployed to the Far East in Asia. In 2013, the U.S. deployed the land-based THAAD missile defense system to Guam. THAAD stands for the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense. THAAD is made up of five components, but only two are really controversial, the interceptor and the radar. The interceptor for obvious reasons, but the radar can surveil uh, f far beyond uh, what it's intended to do, up to 2,000 kilometers. And in just a few weeks ago, the THAAD missile defense system was also deployed to South Korea. Now, I've said the word defense several times now, 
But I want to make it clear that these missile defense systems are not in any way defensive. If anything, they are destabilizing. Uh, missile defense systems undermines deterrence and attempts to give one side an advantage, a nuclear first strike capability. This makes it easier for someone like Trump to push the button. Nuclear warfare is indeed a top tier threat to humanity in the 21st century. The bad issue in South Korea, the most recent missile defense deployment, highlights the fact of this. The controversy surrounding that in South Korea began with just an announcement back in July of 2016. The THAAD system has been said that it is intended to protect the South Koreans and U.S. troops from North Korean missiles, but it has done nothing but increase tensions in the region. Now that THAAD is deployed, tensions have escalated and the region is becoming more destabilized. State actors like China and Russia are stepping in, stating their concern for their own national security. With tensions so high in the Asia-Pacific region, the Korean Peninsula is now ground zero for the new global arms race. This new race is much more dangerous than during the height of the Cold War, and it is directly because of these so-called missile defense systems. North Korea is surely not going to halt their missile defense pro their missile programs. Russia feels threatened from the enhanced encroachment in Eastern Europe. The menacing behavior of the United States around the world is only making other countries feel threatened and in return will keep their nuclear stockpiles, leaving no room for nuclear disarmament. Almost all international political ex experts acknowledge the threat of nuclear weapons. Even the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists have moved the famous doomsday clock forward to two and a half minutes to midnight, just in January 2017. Midnight means we're all dead, by the way. It, has been, uh, it's, it hasn't been this close to midnight since the early 1950s, when the Cold War began. Then the clock was at two minutes to midnight. Uh, and I'm gonna, here's a quote from the Doomsday Clock scientist they just published in January, saying, quote, the probability of global catastrophe is very high, and the actions needed to reduce risk of disaster must be taken very soon. In 2017, we will find that You'll find the danger to be even greater and the need for action even more urgent. It is two and a half minutes midnight, the clock is ticking. Global danger looms. Wise public officials should act immediately, guiding humanity away from the brink. If they do not, wise citizens must step forward and lead the way." Unquote. <laughs> The Global Network's intention is to discuss these issues and to ignite education and organizing in order to build an international citizens' movement. In fact, this is the 25th and annual conference of the Global Network. Uh, the Global Network was created back in 1992, and every year since, since then they hold an annual conference, usually in a different country, to help educate the public on the issues of space militarization. Bruce Gagnon, the coordinator of the Global Network, uh, told him a story how, of how he first got into space issues. Back in 19, not, uh, 1982, there was a million man march in uh, New York City against uh, nuclear weapons, an anti nuclear act. And uh, later, Bruce went to a press conference where he heard a general speaking, and one of the journalists asked him, Hey, there's a million people marching against nuclear weapons. What do you think about that? The general responded, saying, that, I think it's great. They're out there marching against this issue, and we're up here in space. They don't have a clue what we're doing. And it clicked with Bruce. He said, you know, we've got to start looking into these issues. And ten years later, the Global Network was founded. So, uh, it is absolutely imperative for us to keep our ears and eyes open today. The Global Network has much to offer, and we have much work to do. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we have guided missiles and misguided men. With Trump launching 59 missile Tomahawk missiles two nights ago, Dr. King was obviously right. So this gives even more reason to do what the Global Network keeps reminding us to do, to keep space for peace. Thank you very much. Well, hi, I'm Joy. I'm from Huntsville, more or less. Welcome to Huntsville. I'm supposed to be the local color, I think. Um, uh, I moved here in about in 1976 or 77, which 
from Huntsville pretty much makes me a native. Um, uh, I just wanted to, to talk a little bit about how I wound up here and what it's like living here. Um, I, uh, I grew up in Florida as a small child, but my stepfather, uh, who, with his building construction degree, uh, had a hard time finding jobs that paid enough to support a family with six kids. So um, he went to work for the Corps of Engineers, and which moved us to North Dakota. You know why we were in North Dakota? What was going on in North Dakota back then? Yes. Into the microphone. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, the Corps of Engineers was in North Dakota building missile silos. Right. Um, and so there's where my relationship with the military industrial complex kind of was seated in my existence. We went from North Dakota to Saudi Arabia with the Corps of Engineers, where we, we were bu building missile silos and barracks and all sorts of stuff for the military in Saudi Arabia. And then when we left Saudi Arabia, we came here because there was an enormous uh, district office for the Corps of Engineers. Uh, and for a while, it seemed like everybody that you bumped into in town had come here from Saudi Arabia. Uh, we've thinned out a little bit since then, but I'm still here. <laughs> um, and so I wound up going to school, uh, and I got my, my first degree in liberal arts. But um, I stayed here, I think, mostly because of the science that's going on here. Mm -hmm. I got interested in physics. I went back to school right here at UAH, got three more degrees in oh. hard sciences. Um, and I worked for NASA and uh, in um, cosmic ray research. Uh, there, uh, there's a lot of science going on here. There are a lot of really smart people here that I wish would put their brains to better use. Yeah. And, but we can't. I really, there's definitely the resources here to do something different than what's going on, okay? But let's be realistic about what's going on. Uh, every, just about every dollar in this community originates in the defense industry. And I, now I teach math. And uh, um, I like to think that I am not taking money from the defense industry. I've never worked for the defense industry. But I know, realistically, that every dollar that comes to me for teaching the, the children of engineers working in the defense industry is coming to me from the defense industry. And I, I just remain hopeful that that can change. We definitely have the resources here to do something different. Um, uh, and recently, um, we started a, a Green Party here in Huntsville, which was like a breath of fresh air to me. Uh, there are actually people that are, you know, are interested in peace and justice and the, you know, the social justice, environmental justice, all sorts of wonderful things like that. If any locals are interested in, in um, what the Green Party's doing, please come and visit me at my table, which will be someplace over here, <laughs> and sign up. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm just really happy to see you guys here. Welcome to Huntsville, uh, and yeah. uh, let's yeah. be part of the sea change that needs to happen. Thank you. Thank you.